Hi everyone, this is the Hardware King team from Apple Security and today we are going to work with an I2C bus with two memory chips. This type of memory is very common in embedded systems. Here's the scenario. This is a lock we have made for our trainings with four buttons and we want to discover how to open it. We can see there are some memory chips and uh, these two seem like a good starting point. The first step from here is to know what is the reference of the chips in order to find the corresponding datasheet and be able to begin our work. Secondly, we will add this chip to the Hardsploit database. Then, we will connect this bus to Hardsploit with the wiring helper. And finally, we will dump the content of the chips to try and find the code that opens the lock. On the chip, we can read 24LC64. That's what we are looking for. OK, let's search for the datasheet. This document contains everything you will need and is crucial to work with a component. There are lots of information in it, but we will only need a few in order to recover the code. We launch the graphical interface and the main window appears. It is empty for now and we need to add the chip to the database before we can interact with it. Let's create it. There are four tabs. The package, characteristics and pins. The misc tab allows you to add comments about the component and is optional. The package. According to the datasheet, this is a TSSOP, has eight pins and is rectangular. The characteristics. The manufacturer is microchip, the name is 24LC64, and the voltage, we can see 2.5 to 5.5 volts, so 3.3 will suffice. Now the pins. We will need to wire the alimentation pins, but they are not needed in this tab. We will only need the clock and the SDA. Now it's done, click on Add to confirm the chip's properties. And it is now available in the main window. Let's connect it to Hardsploit with the wiring helper. After a closer look to the board and the datasheet, we are able to conclude that these are the alimentation pins, this is connected to the clock and this to the SDA. This is all we need to connect to Hardsploit. On this window, just click the pin you want to wire and the corresponding LED on Hasploit will light up, so you cannot be wrong. It is now connected. Let's recover some data. Back to the main window, select commands. We can see there are no commands for now, but don't worry, we don't need any to dump. First, let us do a bus scan to recover the address of each chip. We can see four addresses. There are two addresses per chip, one for reading and the other for writing. Now we need to know what is the frequency of the component and its size. Let's refer once again to the datasheet. OK, 400 kHz. And we see that this is uh, 64 K bits, so 8 kilobytes. Now click on full dump. Enter a name for the output file and watch the magic happen. Okay, so there doesn't seem to be any information in here, so let's try with the other chip. Change the base address and full dump again. Okay, let's scroll down a bit. ACBD. That looks like a code to me. 
Ok, let's unplug the chips and try this. A, C, B, and D. Great, it works. We have retrieved the unlocking code. Now, can we change it? The plan here is to simply write over the existing password. We will need to refer once again to the datasheet in order to know how. OK, let's search for page write. And we can see here there is a control byte. Fortunately for us, Heartsprite will take care of it. Two address bytes to tell where we want to write inside the chip, and then the data bytes. OK, let's create the command. I enter a payload size of 6 because of the two address bytes at the beginning of the command. In this tab, we see the payload size byte and the bus address byte. I set the first payload byte to 19 and the second one to 00, which is the offset of the code. Then, I set the four remaining to the value of the capital letter A. Now, execute the command. We can see that the chip responded with ACK to each byte, so it should be good, but let's stop again just to be sure. Let's scroll down a bit and the password seems to have been changed. Now I can unplug the card and try again with the new password. That's it with Hearthsploit and the chips datasheet. It was easy to recover and change the code of this lock. If you want more information about Hearthsploit, check out our website hearthsploit.io.